All right, how's everybody doing? This is the Comic Samurai. I want to welcome you to my next video, and tonight we're going to be doing another Let's Rank Challenge. This is where we look at a run on a comic series by certain artists, and we rank each cover with a letter grade from A to F, and then we pick our favorite and give it the special S tier ranking. And tonight we're going to be looking at Animal Man, the first 50 issues written by Grant Morrison, all covers done by Brian Boland. So let's go ahead and jump right in. First up, we got this issue number one. And I think that this one is a pretty straightforward, dynamic cover done by Brian Boland. His choice of perspective and personality and giving uh, humanistic characters to animals is just one of his strengths. And he did a great job on this one. It sums up Animal Man and you think, this is a different twist on a hero. I've seen him before. He's got animalistic powers, but I want to check it out. He started out with a bang. I'm giving this one an A. I've always liked that cover. Next up, we got issue number two, of course. And on this one, you don't know what exactly is going on with that lead character. He's kind of fighting his powers. Something's going crazy. All those baboon faces in the background. I love it when they separate the foreground and the background with either a white outline or a black outline or something there. And this is a beautiful image of Animal Man there. And I just like how it's drawn there. This is, it draws you in. You got to see what's going on. I'm giving this one another A. I love the color wash on that one too. Next up, we got issue number three. Now this one, they got that issue, that image of the monkey who's all got pustules all over him. I mean, it makes you want to read it, but I never liked a disgusting cover that didn't have a bit of humor to it or something. This one's just sad and depressing. And that's not how I like my comic books. I know that this was a different flavor and it is definitely more of an intellectual comic book, but this one doesn't work for me. I'm giving it a D. Like I said, I don't like the image of sick animals. It just makes me sad, you know? Next up, we got issue number four, and this is that Buana Beast character who was so weird in his costume with that eyepiece that's like cheetah print, but then the red helmet, oh, it just didn't work. But let's see if it works as a cover. I do like the green and the trade dress there and the pink flamingo and all the animals, the zebra. It is a dynamic image with Animal Man getting in a full Nelson there. This one's getting a B from me. It's a fun one. All right, next up we got issue number five. We're one-tenth done here. Now this one was breaking the fourth wall. They've got a, a artist hand coloring Animal Man. And this is kind of a crucifixion cover. See how he's laying on a cross there? I always thought it was interesting. And you know it was purposeful where he was supposed to be like a crucified image there. And it is a compelling, interesting image there of the hand painting the image there. And it's like this weird mix of 3D and yet it's flat and the hand is 3D. I really do like this issue. It was creative and it's in getting an A from me. I like that Brian Boland image. Next up, we got number six, and they return to just a classic comic book cover here with Hawk Girl fighting Animal Man there. And if you're going to go one-on-one, -on -one, I like it. She has got such an amazing, sexy costume there, and she's swinging that big mace there, punching at Animal Man, and he's falling. You don't know if he can fly at this point or not, but those boots, I like this one. This one's getting an A. That's a beautiful iteration of Hawk Woman or Hawk Girl there. Moving on to issue number seven, and right here we've got Brian Boland's trademark humor. I love it when he ties that into a cover image. And you've got this kind of old pouting superhero sitting in the foreground, in the background. And he's like 1950s robots fighting Animal Man there. It is funny. I do like this image there. And those arms of the robots, I like his take on a robot image. And this one's getting a B from me. I do like it. All right, next up we got issue number eight. Now this is where Anime, Animal Man goes up against the Mirror Master. And I love when they do different perspectives and look at the images of Mirror Master coming in. And Animal Man's on the ceiling there and the perspective is tilted there. Oh, I do like this one. It throws you off. It makes you want to read it. I like the expressions on everybody's faces. It just tells a story. This one's getting an A. I like that cover. I wish that more covers would use that trope of just telling a story, interesting, humor. It, t it draws you in. It makes you want to read it. And that's what I think the covers today are missing. They're all just glamour shots. and I mean, that's okay. But I like a cover like this. It tells a story. Look at the expression on the handyman's faces. And what is he carrying there? And, uh, Animal Man, the main star, is just poking in from the side. But you got this huge Martian manhunter standing in the background there. This one, I do like the colors. I love uh, Brian Boland's take on Martian Manhunter. This one's getting a B. I like that cover. All right, and issue number 10 here. 
is got this kind of weird abstract image of the unraveling of Animal Man. And it's just his skeleton, the spine, and his pelvis bones there left. And this other uh, fox something is that character in the background there. I do like Brian Boland's expression on her face there. I love the purple background here. This is an interesting one. I, it is kind of scary there. The way he did the unraveling, it does look like layers. and The action lines there, everything was done right. They did what they were trying to do on this one. It's getting a B from all right, next up we got number 11 here. Now this one, I don't know if it works or not. We got this hand with the spiky fingernails behind him there. An animal man in kind of a frozen pose there. He's not being bound by anything, but he's just got a weird pose. The hand, this one doesn't tell a story. It's very confusing. The black does work. I do love the colors in the trade dress there. But as far as covers go, yeah, this one's getting a D. Not my favorite. And when the story... It's confusing and it's not compelling. That is where I don't like it. But this next one here, issue number 12, I love this take on an MC Escher riff where it's like a repeating pattern, but each one is slightly different. It really is one of my favorite covers here where there's multiple animal mans and each one got a little bit different hair and a little bit different uh, facial expression. And they're all questioning like, what is going on? And instead of animal man, they cross it out and make it animal men. This is clever. It's humorous. It's funny. I love this cover. I wish they do stuff like this more. It's getting an A. Next up is issue number 13, and this is one of the stranger images here. And this is the one that I felt that Brian Boland kind of mailed it in. When he just has a big uh, figure there, a villain, just in silhouette. It's like, I wanted to see Buana Beast, if that's who it is. I want to see the costume. I want to see it. I mean, maybe you're supposed to focus on this really strange, like, vulture-type uh, flying Pegasus thing there. But it just, they missed an opportunity. This one's getting a C. It is an interesting image. I mean, that's such a strange... Uh, animal there. It's interesting to look at. Next up, we got number 14. And this one's bringing in a little girl who's supposed to be innocent and then a hand there. And it doesn't know if it is dad, the animal man there, the silhouette. This is a boring image. I never like it. Like, I want a superhero uh, cover that shows bright colors and people fighting and stuff with children involved. This one's getting an F from me. I don't care for that one at all. Next up, we got issue number 15. Now, this one does return to kind of a great comic book cover there. And they can do melancholy, sad covers, too, with this character Dolphin cradling this dolphin that's been hit by a harpoon. And the baby's there with it. Now, this is a take that's supposed to tug on the heartstrings, and it works differently than that one. I do love this one. This one's beautiful and heart-wrenching, and it, the emotion is clear what you're supposed to be feeling. This one bounces back and gets a high B, a B plus. Not quite an A, but a B plus. Next up, we got number 16, and this one was always kind of confusing to me. I never knew exactly who that villain was that's laying there with the time clock and the timepiece around his neck and the hourglass there. And that purple and white costume didn't really work. I do like Metamorpho and Animal Man, and the elongated man. They're kind of Doom Patrol team. I do like the cemetery in the background there. I do like the yellow lighting, but I just don't know who this is, and they're just standing around there. They're not doing anything. And what is this supposed to be? The shoulder of somebody there? This one doesn't work for me. I'm giving it a D. All right, next up we got number 17. And this is another one that they were trying to get a story, an image, an emotion across. And whatever it was, it was lost. You're like, he's mad or upset. And this chimpanzee's got his eyes stitched closed. It is a strange image. While it is compelling, I didn't want to read it. It's like, I hate the torture of an animal. And to see a chimpanzee, they're one of your favorites. I didn't like this one. It did work getting an emotion across, but I didn't like the emotion, and it's getting a D from me. I'm not a big fan of that one. All right, next up we got number 18 here, and this is just a bunch of animals drawn with the silhouette of Animal Man. I didn't think this one worked. The colors are just kind of washed and pastels. I mean, they're beautiful images of animals, but it doesn't use Brian Bolin's strengths in any way. And just the silhouette of that character. I know it's trying to say that, hey, he is empty without the animals or whatever. They, they fill him and make him whole, but it didn't work. This one's getting an F. It just seems lazy. Next up, we got number 19. Now, this one's breaking the fourth wall, and it is a bit more existential. Now, this is when Grant Morrison's writing took a shift from me, and it was really becoming an abstract, um, uh, self-indulgent type writing style, where it was uh, writing about writing, and uh, got into Nietzsche, and theory, and philosophy, and I, this cover kind of summed that up. Like, we are going to get into existential things here, and I think it worked. I love how this image of Animal Man is interacting with somebody in a comic book panel. This one works for me. I'm giving it a B. 
I do wish they'd have done the coloring a little different, which is the white background and a white piece of paper, but it worked. All right, next up is number 20. And we get an image here, and I think this one should be ranked right up there with Tony Stark's alcoholism here, where he's crouched up and he's got all these pills on the floor, and it is just an image of abuse and depression and things like that and with a broken picture. There's so much symbolism in it, but I want my comic book. It's not what I like. If I went into a comic book with uh, The Watchmen or something, I'd be expecting it. But Animal Man, I want more... I don't know. I didn't like this one. I'm giving it a C. I mean, it, it, it is a compelling, amazing image with those blues and everything, but I didn't like the emotion it was trying to get across. Next up is number 21 here. We're back to Animal Man battling someone, but it's someone with white hair like an old person. And Animal Man does have clawed hands, and that's kind of compelling there. But other than that, I don't know. This image, it's like it's got this brown area right here. I mean, what is that supposed to be? Like part of a chair or something? This image doesn't work for me. I... I'm sorry, but it's getting a D. I do like two characters squaring off, and it does get that right. So next up is number 22, and again, they're bringing his daughter back there, and he's fading away, and just the innocent little girl staring up, and you see the back of her, a trope that I don't like, and just this boring scene of urban America in the background, the white picket fence. I get that that's a symbol, but this one doesn't work for me. I'm giving this one an F. I didn't like that one. If he's doing something, he should be more dynamic. He's just standing there, static image, not work for me. Next up is number 23, and he went back to trying to use a little bit of humor here. And it is a funny, the kissing reaction here, and the girlfriend, like, looking over the shoulder, and they're hippies protesting, and you got the phantom stranger there. But they're trying to tell a story, but it's confusing. It's like, are they watching this? Are they interacting? And they brought back that DC trope of the checker at the top there. Yeah. This one's just getting a C. I get a little bit of humor, but I'm not exactly sure what the punchline is. Next up is issue number 24. Now, this is a horrific issue here. An image, uh, just that scary, the a psycho pirate with that image coming out there and all these comic book images and his hand there and Animal Man in the background. This is a haunting image. It really is scary. And Brian Bullen has a knack for that. He did a great job on this one. I'm giving this one an A. I like that image. All right, next up we got number 25. We're halfway done. This is where it really took a turn. And the flavor of this series really changed on this one. I do like this cover of like the monkey sitting at the typewriter and it's actually writing a script there. That is a creative one. And it is the Animal Man script. So it's Grant Morrison kind of making commentary on his own writing. I don't like that trade dress color there. Everybody knew I'd say that. But everything else on this one works. It is compelling. I had to open this one up and see what it was about. This one's getting a B from me. All right, the last one in that slot. Next up, we got number 26. Now, this is kind of a photographic cover here, and I've heard that this is actually Grant Morrison's torso here. And you got Animal Man laying on the ground. They're colored so differently. It's like a mix of realistic photographic realism with this uh, kind of photographic realistic type art there. I like this one. It works for me. I'm giving this one an A. I like that. The juxtaposition of those two styles really worked for me. Next up, we got issue number 27 here. Now, this one. I never understood this cover. It's him in the jungle, like laying in a hospital bed, though. Is it a vision? Is it a dream? And then you got like a saber-toothed tiger attacking this horse. Is it prehistoric? This is a very confusing issue for me. Uh, yeah, it didn't work. If I, I want my heroes up and fighting, like in a hospital bed recovering, that's a part of the story I don't want to hear about. This one's getting an F from me. All right, next up we got number 28 here. And this one, what a weird romp. They brought in all these strange characters. And this guy who's all segmented. And you got this newspaper guy who's got type all over him. Fighting Animal Man there. This is a great cover. They introduced these new characters. It's like a team up. He's got to figure things out. And you're right there along with him for the ride. This is a compelling cover. I'm giving this one a B. All right. After that one, we got issue number 29 here. Now this one. With this like invisible type guy who's got him by these like ice grabbers, the pliers things in this car, beautiful car going over this cliff. And the expression of this girl there in the shadow with the rocks falling. Now, I don't know if I like the story it's telling, but it is tension filled. Like it is a cliffhanger. And I do like that. This one's getting a B from me. It's kind of a fun one. All right, issue number 30 is next. Now here, this is such a strange cover here with the faces of the monkeys there. It's like something out of a Twilight Zone episode. And then the face of the bride is a clock there. And his expression, Brian Bolin, is the only artist who could get away with this cover. It is exceptional. What a weird, strange, abstract cover. I'm giving this one a B. Oh, that's creepy. 
Next up, we got number 31 here. Now, this is that, I think the green cigarette is the name of this character here. And this a segmented man, whatever his name is. And uh, the kids, though, I don't like it when they bring the kids. And although it's humorous here, it's a little bit better. And you've got this uh, tombstone that you can read here. And those two weird characters coming out. Let's see. I'm going to give this one a B. I do like that. Brian Boland really tried to push the envelope there, and it worked. All right. Next up, we got number 32. Now, on this one, it introduces that Heisinger's cat or whatever it is where there's a probability of 50 50 whether or not the cat's gonna be alive it really did turn me on to that channel of philosophy and i loved that about it they really did uh, introduced me to some new new concepts that i'd never heard of before and this comic book really did it in a great way i love this cover all the uh, uh, equations in the background there this one's getting a b from me i dig it all right next up we got number 33 here I don't think I like this one with the dead bald eagle there and the blood and it's just him holding it there. Ah, it's just a sad image. The white stark background. It's beautiful, but just because the image of a killed eagle, I don't like that. I'm giving it a C. All right, next up we got number 34 here. And again, they're using that trope of the hand transforming, becoming a claw. And it's kind of a symbol of evilness taking over, but it's been used so much. It's, begin it's a bit of a cliche. I do like the details that he put in his hand there, and I do like the details in his face. You can see his expression well. No, it's just not that dynamic. He's not changing. He's not fighting it. He's not howling in pain. It's just pretty static there. This one's getting a C from it. All right, next up we got number 35 here, and this one was an interesting take on kind of a Godzilla or a kaiju uh, trope where the big being in the pyramids there and he's carrying the this, this superheroine who's fallen and, and they got that big towering type like in the movies and these flying saucers, all the tropes of the 50s sci-fi movies. I do like this one. It would have been good in black and white too, but they did use color. This one works. I'm giving it a C. All right. Uh, let's give that one a B. Yeah, it deserves a B. That's a fun one. I do like that. All right, next up we got number 36. And again, another abstract kind of metaphysical one where you're supposed to figure out what's happening in this shape that's kind of humanoid and the girl and the dog, this doesn't work. Uh, the colors, I do like the black background contrasting with like the rainbow inside. That's the only thing that saves it from getting a D. Not one of my favorites. All right, number 37 is next. This is another humor cover here with the spider dropping on this girl and he's whistling you know that he had something to do with it but he's like i don't know anything about it i do like the humor on a cover and the way the spider was drawn with the motion there and her reaction this one's getting a b it's a fun one all right we're gonna have to start doubling up lots of b's all right next up we got number 38 now this was one of my favorite ones it was fun it's making fun of the punisher and we got the penalizer there and he's got all those weapons and the colors and his costume is so bad on purpose I think and all the weapons strapped to him the flat top the cigar all the tropes he's making fun of it and it's laying on top of an animal man cover I love this one it's the perfect tongue-in-cheek humor that Brian Boland excels at and perfected this one's getting an A I like that one all right next up we got number 39 here this one has got an image of Animal Man howling at the moon. And see how that silhouette behind his head, it was perfectly placed. Like he can put his camera in any position. And that lineup is just so perfect there. I love the use of that moon there. If you're just going to do a circle, do it something like that. And the wolves running with the wolves, but he's nude. And these characters behind him like reacting like, oh, there's a naked man and a pack of wolves running. This really is a beautiful cover. I'm giving this one an A. I like that. It tells a great story and it compels you to open it. Next up, we got number 40. And this one, I didn't like. The image of this elderly man grasping animal man is just, they're trying to make a point and it's supposed to be a big thing. It's the war of the gods or whatever up top, but it's a little bit distracting. And I never liked just the, the, the old, the age of like this old guy versus animal man. And like, I don't like that thought of a superhero fighting the elderly for some reason. This one's getting a D from me. I don't care for him. Next up is number 41 here, and this was another humor cover here, where the chicken lays an egg and a triceratops hatches out of it. And Animal Man's like making a face like, what is going on? And the chicken's even like, oh, that's not what I expected. It, it, uh, it usurps your expectations. And that's what a good humor comic book cover does for me. And nobody can do it like Brian Bull. And I love this cover. It's getting a B from me. It's so funny. All right, where are we at here with our Bs? Next up, we got number 42 here. And this one, I know that they designed these characters to look like this, but I never liked their look. Like these probing things coming out of their eyes, 
and just the blank faces with the pink fleshy heads and these purple costumes and just Animal Man's hand there. I do like how there's a foreground and a background, but this one's getting an F just because of the design of these villains. I never liked them. Oh, it's so uninspired and just, it doesn't work. It's off-putting to the eye. Giving that an F, sorry. Next up, we got number 43. Now, this one has a definite background and foreground. You get the image of these two bears. Like, almost, you don't know if they're kissing or not, but it's reflected in these two characters here. It's so passion-filled. And the crisscross hatching of the quilt that they're laying on, it really is just a great image. And it almost makes a heart there. You don't know if it's really a love tale. Who is this woman that he's kissing? And it's just a beautiful cover. This one works for me. I'm giving it a B. All right, next up we got number 44 here in this one with the white background and uh, Animal Man's fighting this character here. Her hand is kind of turning into a claw with the mask. Something about this one never worked for me. I don't know if it was the costume of this uh, female figure or you don't know who it is, why they're fighting, and he's his face is covered. He's got her hand on his face. I'm sorry, I never liked this one. In the white stark background, sometimes it works and I love it, and this time it didn't and I don't like it. I'm giving this one an F. All right, next up, we got number 45, and the penalizer came back on this one and made a return, and he's holding this perp, and he's got a gun to his face, and we've got a little circle inlet there of Animal Man holding the phone and all this type there, and look at the expression on his face. If Dave Gibbons hadn't have drawn the Watchmen, I think that uh, Brian Bowen would have done a great job. I mean, this is like the comedian right there. Look at that mustache and everything. I do like this one. It's humorous. I like the colors on it. This one's getting an A. It's a fun cover. All right, next up we got number 46 here. I always hate it when they make it like old timey and they try to use like daguerreotype or uh, like a bronze image or something. And here it was almost supposed to look like leather, that tan. I hate that color on the cover of a comic. It just sucks all the energy on it. And why do we want to watch these old time like Davy Crockett hunters and a bear killing a bear there? I don't like this cover at all. I'm giving it an F. All right, next up we got number 47. Now this one features the death of Buana Beast inside, I'm pretty sure. And this cover was always so off-putting to me. You got these bubbles, these circles coming over his hands. And there's always these things with hands, something happening to his hands. It's transforming and getting infected or something. And this child, I did not like that villain. Something about that, the naked girl child is just creepy and off-putting. This one's getting an F from me again. I did not care for that. All right, next up we got number 48. We're getting near the end here, and we've got this giant beast here made out of all those bubbles. And inside, this glowing image there of whoever's controlling this thing. And you've got Animal Man carrying this innocent female figure here, and this house, church, steeple toppling. There's a symbol there of the tower falling. Something about this, though. Again, don't bring in the new children and this blob beast. It's just kind of a cliche. I didn't like the color of it. Why the background? The same color as this monster. They could have done a lot more. This one's getting even an F from me again. I did not care for that one. All right, next up we got number 49. And I like it when they take small things like these dust mites or whatever they are and they blow them up with ultra detail. It looks like one of those electron microscope pictures that you see of those dust mites or whatever, but those huge uh, hair follicles or whatever they are. And you've got Animal Man riding one of those dust mites there. I like this one. It's fun. It's adventure. It's different. You don't you expect them riding one of those things. Now, how are they get so small? Are those things super big? This one's a, a pretty good cover. I'm giving it a C. All right, we filled up that board pretty good. And this is the last one. And I'm going to feature Animal Man number 50 here. And this is one of my least favorite of the covers. And I think Brian Bolin went out on a pretty low note on this one. It's kind of a Rorschach ink blot behind a, just a black and white figure of Animal Man there. Again, he's kind of like in a crucified pose there or something, spread eagle. I didn't like the colors on the ink blot. It's not telling a story. It's not getting the point across. This one was a big fail for me. And I'm giving it an F. Well, we had a lot of good ones, though, that I did like. So we're going to take a look at the ones in my A-list there, and we're going to assign an S-tier ranking to my favorite. We've got number one there, number two with the baboons. Oh, the one where he's getting crucified. Hawk Girl, the Mirror Master. Oh, that repeating image. Psycho Pirate, the Penalizer, the Moon Howling at the Moon, another Penalizer, and the one with Grant Morrison there. Let's narrow it down here. I have always liked that repeating image there that's rem reminiscent of M.C. Escher. I've always liked that Psycho Pirate there, his costume, but not as much Mirror Master. Ah, it's just three of them. The cross, Penalizer. Oh, that Hawk Woman image is so great there. All right, which of these two do I like better? This is the one instance where I am going with this Hawk Girl 
I think that his uh, Brian Boland's image is just so compelling. It's the one that breaks the trend of it wasn't like uh, kind of against the grain of what a normal comic book cover was. I like just a simple heads up battle there of two characters. And what a weird mix. I just love it. Everything about this cover, the colors in the background there. I love how Hot Girl's using that mace there. And it's just before the moment of impact there. Yeah, it's a great battle cover there. And it is crowned my S tier champion there. Well, I hope you enjoyed a look at these first 50 issues of Animal Man done by Brian Boland. It really is a great read. If you haven't read this series, it is amazing. Well, thanks for joining me. Have a great night.